Hi, my name is Yandel Benjamin. I'm a lace wig designer. I'm the founder and owner of Queens of Weave Lace Wigs, which can be found online at queenslace.com. And we're shooting a series, and today we're going to talk about the four things you need to know before purchasing a wig. All right, point one, the first thing that you should do before purchasing a lace wig or a lace front wig is you have to focus on the lace. There's several different types of lace on the market, some good, some bad. But the two main types of lace are Swiss lace and French lace. And this is an example of a Swiss lace cap right here. This would be the cap for a full lace wig. This is Swiss lace. Now quickly I'm going to tell you the difference between Swiss and French lace. Swiss lace is a delicate type of lace. It has fine holes and it's easy to adhere to the scalp. French lace is thicker, it has bigger holes and it's not that easy to adhere to the scalp and French lace is what is not as realistic. If you're going for a realistic look, you want Swiss lace. French lace is more of what you see in the hair store with synthetic wigs. Also, when we're speaking about lace, I want to talk about lace colors. If you want the lace to match to your skin complexion, you need to speak with your whoever you're ordering from, your wig designer, to make sure they know the complexion of your skin because there's four main colors that it comes in. It comes in a clear color, it comes in a light brown color, it comes in a medium brown and a dark brown tone. So you need to speak with your lace wig designer about what type of color because the lace can be dyed. Also, I wanna talk about the size of the lace wigs, I mean of those caps. When you are ordering a custom made wig, we already talked about that in another video about how to measure your head for the size of the cap. But if you're just ordering a stock wig, there's usually the size, it's, it's pretty much sometimes one size fits all, but you have the option of a small, medium, or a large. The average size sold stock type of wig is a medium. So you need to make sure, if you know you have an extra small head or if you think your head might be a little bit larger, then you should consult with your wig designer about that too. The next point that I wanna make about steps that you need to take before buying a lace wig or a lace front is you need to know what kind of stocking cap you should be wearing. And I'm gonna start with the black stocking cap. This is actually a weaving net cap, but it's just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about here. All right, I think, in my opinion, the black stocking caps are a no-no for any complexion, any race, it doesn't matter. Because you want to give an, a, a realistic look. No one's natural scalp is black. So you wanna stay away from the black stocking caps. Okay, so the next one I'm going to bring up is another neutral color. This is more tan. There's two types of tan colors but I like this color because this looks realistic for the color of a scalp, your scalp. Remember, you want a realistic looking scalp. So, this, this color is okay. And this color can work for any complexion, in my opinion, because this is a natural looking scalp color. The next color is more of a beige. And the beige will work for people that have fair complexions, fair skin tones. This is where the beige cap will come in place. The last one is the brown. Okay. Now, the brown is ideal for somebody that has a darker complexion. So ladies, we wanna stay away from the black caps. Try to stick to a brown, a beige, if you have a fair skin tone complexion, or this color can work for everyone. 
All right, the next point that I want to talk about are is glues and tapes. Before buying a lace wig or a lace front, you should do some research on glues and tapes. Now, there are many different types of tapes and there's a double-sided tape and there's many different types of adhesives, I meant to say. Now, this is how the double-sided tape looks and you will need tweezers to help you apply it. You'll remove it on both sides. But what the point I want to make is, before I talked about French lace and Swiss lace, the thing about French lace is that's the lace that can be found in the hair store and it's much thicker. So it's not as easy to adhere to your actual skin. So you might need to use both double-sided tape and glue. With Swiss lace, you might just need to use glue, but it's up to you. You have to try these things out. Now, I have a lot of clients that say, well, I don't, what if I don't want anything to do with glues or tapes? Well, then I refer them to the no glue lace front. And this is a no glue lace front. And what it does is, this is how it looks on the inside. And it's made with a plastic lace. And what it does is it just snugs on top of your head when you wear it on, on your head. And it has the adjustable straps at the back like a regular wig. So this is an alternative solution. Another solution is having a custom made wig where I can make for you as Part four, we're going to talk about maintaining the wig, which a lot of people sometimes forget. Now, when it comes to maintaining the wig, maintaining that lace in the front of the wig is extremely important. This is an investment. You bought the wig for the natural look. So you really have to take good care of the lace. Now, sometimes the lace in the front starts lifting and sometimes that's a sign that it's time to remove the whole entire wig and when you do that you should really clean off the inside of the wig and by that you can take alcohol with a paper towel just like you would clear your hairline and clean off the inside of the wig and get rid of that glue get rid of that tape Another time, sometimes you just have your corners that start to lift up and you always can go back and take the glue, a little bit of glue and reapply the corners and press it down like I showed you in the other videos with the rat tail comb. But when we want to get more into actually maintaining the hair on the lace front or the full lace wig, this is very important because you should be using products made for the hair. Okay, let's continue talking about maintaining the wig, the actual hair on the wig. I want to talk about products. There is a variety of different products available in the hair store, and one is a wig spray. This comes in different forms or shapes, but I'm not a fan of the wig sprays for a Remy hair lace front or lace wig. This is ideal for a synthetic type of wig. All right, another product that I use when washing my wig is I use a lot of Avon products, believe it or not, and it's a Lotus Shield product that helps pre prevent frizziness in the hair. And this is actually a ser serum that is a frizz control and you apply it after washing the wig. This works well with curly textures. Another product that works well with curly textures or anything that's like an instant moisturizer for specifically curly hair. So that's what you have to keep in mind when buying products, the type of hair. So for example, on a Remy straight lace front wig, you're not going to use pink lotion hair moisturizer because that is made for a different type of hair texture that's going to weigh down and bring down the hair. You're going to use more products in the section of things like Paul Mitchell. You're going to use higher end products that will be used on the hair or you can even use Pantene Pro-V but things that are made for the type of hair that you have. Keep that in mind. All right, let's continue by talking a little bit about washing. You do not want to overwash your wig. And the reason for that is that it can cause damage to the wig. So that's why you're going to use products made for that type of hair. So it might be natural for you to wash your hair every two weeks, but it's not okay to wash your wig every two weeks. I feel that you should be washing your wig on a minimum of once a month. 
Sometimes you can go longer, but if it has a lot of product on in it, you should be washing your wig at least once a month. All right, hi guys, it's time for Ask Yandel, where I'm going to answer a couple of questions on viewer mail. And if you ever wanna ask me anything, please feel free to email me any questions at help at queenslace.com. Okay, so let's start with a few questions. Dear Yandel, I'd like to order a custom lace wig, but can't afford one. Do you have any suggestions? I think this is an awesome question and a lot of people cannot afford good wigs. And what I do is I offer payment plans. Now what you would need to do is contact me, we would have a consultation, go over the type of wig that you want, and we would set up a payment plan through PayPal where you would pay me once a week, every two weeks, once a month, whatever works for you. Once the wig payment is made in full, the wig will be shipped to you. And that's how it works. So let's move on to one more question for the day. Dear Yandel, I've noticed thinning along my hairline since I started wearing wigs. Any suggestions to stop this? This is a very good question as well. Now, my first thing is going to be to tell this person to immediately have a consultation with their hairstylist because there's many reasons why the thinning could be caused, but based on my experience, it could be something as severe as traction alopecia, or it could be something minor where they might need to take a break from wearing wigs. And to give you an example, what a lot of females don't know is that when you're wearing a wig and weaves, sometimes we put our hair in the same braiding pattern, switch the braiding pattern up. Also, when you're home and you're home for the weekend, you're not around people, take the wig off, let your hair breathe. Do not forget to take care of your real hair underneath the wig. And that's all for today.